Hello and welcome to My Career in Data, a podcast where we discuss with industry leaders and experts how they have built their careers. I'm your host, Shannon Kemp, and today we're talking to Katrina Ingram from Ethically Aligned AI. More and more companies are considering investing in data literacy education, but still have questions about its value, purpose, and how to get the ball rolling. Introducing the newest monthly webinar series from Dataversity, Elevating Enterprise Data Literacy, where we discuss the landscape of data literacy and answer your burning questions. Learn more about this new series and register for free at dataversity.net. Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer at Dataversity and this is My Career in Data, a Dataversity Talks podcast dedicated to learning from those who have careers in data management, to understand how they got there and to be talking with people who help make those careers a little bit easier. To keep up to date in the latest in data management education, go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Today, we are joined by Katrina Ingram, the founder and CEO of Ethically Aligned AI. And normally, this is where a podcast host would read a short bio of the guest. But in this podcast, your bio is what we're here to talk about. Katrina, hello and welcome. Hey, Shannon. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I am doing well. Looking forward to our chat. Uh, Me too. So, Let's dive in. Um, I love your background. You are the founder and CEO of Ethically Aligned AI. So tell me about the company. Yeah, absolutely. So there's a little bit of a backstory to this company. Um, I actually did a midlife career pivot in 2017. So I went back to school and I started doing a master's degree in communications and technology at the University of Alberta. And while I was there, I encountered this topic of AI ethics. So this is 2018 and I was really interested in this topic. I just wanted to dig into it. I spent all my time researching it and trying to understand how data scientists and machine learning experts were thinking about ethics. Were they even thinking about ethics? Um, And so when I graduated in 2020, I really wanted to keep going in this field, but I didn't really see any companies really focused on this issue. So I decided to launch my own company in 2021, Ethically Aligned AI. Um, We're a social enterprise, and uh, we focus on helping organizations to build and deploy better, more responsible AI solutions. And what that's looked like in the past couple of years is a lot of education, because people don't really know um, how AI has been impacting them. I think they're starting to get a sense of that now as we're kind of living through this, you know, AI hype cycle at the moment. But a couple of years ago, it wasn't really apparent. So I did a lot of work in education, a lot of training, a lot of workshops, and a lot of consulting. Um, And I'm really excited because we're embarking um, on some new work in the realm of tools and some technologies that we're going to build to deliver a process to help with responsible AI. So that's a little bit about me and the company and how we got started. Oh, that's very cool. And I'm excited to learn how uh, you decided to make that make career shift. But let's back it up. And so... um, a little bit. So tell me what you think, what is your definition then of responsible AI? What's the, what's the focus there? Yeah, it's really interesting. So you can look at this from two different perspectives. So the perspective that um, first hit me was look at all the harmful things that are happening with AI. So this is 2018. We're talking about facial recognition. We're talking about AI gone wrong scenarios. We're talking about all the ways in which AI was impacting people and causing really harmful outcomes, discrimination, bias, unfairness of all kinds. So that's kind of one way of framing it. Or you could look at it and go, what are all the ways in which we could do better and be more responsible and more thoughtful in terms of how we're building these products so we can get to better outcomes? And I do look at it both ways. Um, Sometimes it's helpful just to illustrate the ways in which harms are happening um, so that you can get to that better outcome. So that's really what responsible AI is all about, um, the practices, the processes, Uh, the tools that you need to get to these better outcomes. Oh, very nice. So um, then how do you work with your customers? What's your typical work week look like? Well, we are a startup. So every week is a little bit different. Um, Mm -hmm. And I still have one foot in uh, academia. So for example, this week I was marking a lot of papers. I I taught a summer course um, on AI ethics at the university. So I was doing a lot of that. Um, But on any given week, I'm doing some business development, I'm talking with new potential clients, Um, I'm doing consulting work with existing clients, I'm putting together training courses, 
Um, I spend a lot of time reading because this field is, um, it, it's just happening so rapidly. Everything is changing and in flux. So I really feel the need to be really up on the latest research and the latest things for going on. So I do a lot of reading. Um, and then I, I do some media engagements, things like this podcast, for example. So it's kind of a, it's a nice mix. It's a whole bunch of different things that I'll do in the week. Sure, sure. Absolutely. So, so let's tell me then, Katrina, was this the dream? When, so like, say you were six years old and was this the dream? When I grow up, I want to be a founder and CEO of a company that promotes responsible AI. No, no, we're close. Um, <laughs> what was I the dream? Want, <laughs> I wanted to be a fashion designer. That was kind of my oh. first dream. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then, and then yeah. the adults, they kind of come in and they're like, are you sure you really want to do that? And, <laughs> um, and so I didn't pursue that. I actually wound up in business school instead, um, oh, studying yeah. to be a marketer. So it, it was kind of like, you know, this reality uh, check on, on the dream. But I, I think in hindsight, I probably gave up on that a little too soon. Um, but uh, the other yeah. thing, yeah, the other thing I wanted to do is write. I, I really wanted to be a writer. Um, uh -huh. And I kind of feel like I'm closer to that because I'm doing a lot of writing. I do writing for my blog. I write my courses. Oh, yeah. I write speeches. So I am maybe like closer to that dream. Um, but yeah, the idea of AI, I mean, that was just not even in the, you know, in the consideration set at all. Oh, interesting. So you went into study business then. So what, why did you pursue that? And, and where did that lead you? Where'd you start? What'd you end up majoring in? Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you the, the journey <laughs> to get here. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's really weird. I think probably a lot of people think they have a really like circuitous career journey. I know I did. I 100% know that's true. So yeah, so I started in business school um, and to get my creative fix, I thought I'll major in marketing. That'll be my thing. Um, yeah. So I started out um, when I graduated, I went to work at an ad agency. So this is um, <laughs> in the 90s. And I didn't love it. It was a little cutthroat. It was a little Melrose place. If you remember that TV show, yes. people were kind of <laughs> like that. And I was a yeah. little bit, I, that wasn't me. I, did, I couldn't, you know, step on other people or do any of that. So um, anyways, I found my way into the, the technology space, um, working at a company called Crystal Decisions. And that might be a name that's familiar to some of the audience because we made Crystal Reports, which is the big reporting software um, of, the, <laughs> of the time anyways. And um, we were in the BI space um, and I was doing marketing and some of it was really interesting, but honestly, it wasn't quite creative enough. I didn't quite feel like it was my thing. And on my way to work every day, I used to walk past the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation building the CBC. Yeah. Um, and, and I thought, you know, wouldn't it be fun to work in broadcasting? It'd be so cool. So um, one day I quit my job and I, I applied at the CBC and I started working in radio and I loved it. It was, it was great. Um, yeah. And then that led to other um, career opportunities to manage a radio station here in Alberta, where I'm from. So I managed an indie music station called CKUA Radio um, and it was super fun. Um, and that's kind of where I stayed until that 2017 moment where I decided I was going to pivot and go back to school. Um, so in a weird way, like I'm back in technology again, yeah, but with yeah. a completely different slant on, on everything. Sure. Oh, that's so fascinating. How fun to work for, uh, you know, radio. I've always envisioned and in, in some kind of radio career if in some other dimension past life of mine <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun place especially in the yeah. radio it's kind of like um yeah. that old tv show wkrp where you have all these weird characters and you're just trying yeah. to like get them you know organized it kind of felt like it was hurting cats on any given day <laughs> <laughs> i'm sure so you know um so you went back into technology you know, when, and so when you started school again, you know, what, what was the intent there? What was the, uh, um, the, the, really the drive, the passion that you started, of classes you started signing up for? Yeah, well, to be totally honest, Shannon, yeah. I was, you know, I was feeling a bit lost at that point, because what was going on for mm -hmm. me is I, I was watching media blow up in some ways. So, a lot of the challenges with media, which have to do with technology, because technology came in and it kind of undercut the business model for a lot of media organizations. And we right. see that, especially with news, um, printed yeah. newspapers being kind of the biggest example. 
And while I was a little bit um, insulated from that, I had a lot of friends working in media. And I, I really had this moment where I thought, do I want to keep going in this field or do I want to try some new things? And I honestly didn't know what those new things were. So this degree sounded interesting and I thought I'll go and work it out and figure out what I want to do next. So it wasn't super intentional in, in the sense of mm -hmm. I want to go and retrain to be X. It was a little bit more haphazard um, and accidental and just kind of like, I, I'm going to try this. And I'm going to see what emerges from this process. Um, mm -hmm. and, and good things did emerge from it. So So that was really how it all worked out. How brave. I love that. <laughs> that is so brave and bold and just way to follow your, your instincts and doing what you needed to do for you and, and take a chance. So, ah, oh, I love that. With a robust catalog of courses offered on demand and industry leading live online sessions throughout the year, the Dataversity Training Center is your launch pad for career success. Browse the complete catalog at training.dataversity.net and use code DVTALKS for 20% off your purchase. So what was your biggest lesson then so far in, in your career? Yeah, I think it's this idea, we're, we're told at a young age that we're going to have this really linear career path. Like we're going to go into something, we're going to climb the ladder, we're going to get to the, you know, the top of that ladder, and it's all going to be super linear. And so my biggest lesson has been it's it's not really like that, and that's okay. Um, yeah. And in fact, I recently, I love this quote, I love Malcolm Gladwell, and he said uh, this quote, he said, it's a risk not to change careers. And I'm like, that's fantastic. I, uh, I feel yeah. really validated when I yeah. do something like that. So, yeah. so that's kind of like my big, you know, maybe life lesson. And then the other thing I'll add, like as an entrepreneur, the other really big piece of advice that I got is to say yes to opportunities. Um, you may not always know exactly how you're going to accomplish that goal. But there's something about stepping out there and saying yes, and then figuring it out as you go, that I think is really essential to the journey of being an entrepreneur and being bold about things. And so that's something that I think mm -hmm. about a lot, too, because sometimes it feels like risky, like, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but you know what, I'm going to sign up and say yes, and I, I feel confident I can figure it out. Uh. So true. So great. You know, part of why we uh, started this podcast is because, you know, I too grew up, you know, believing that my, that career path would be so linear and especially in data, you know, there, um, for, for anybody older than Gen Z, I think, you know, it wasn't a, uh, what there wasn't really a, you know, a college degree. There wasn't a, you know, data was just this kind of obscure thing out on the edges so nobody in data management really had a straight path <laughs> to it. It's just everyone just kind of stumbled into it, you know, and it's so true. And it's so fun to explore and hear how people have explored to find their their path and their niche in data. Yeah, absolutely. I'm even just um, thinking about your the title Dataversity, and I'm thinking about diversity and data and all these diverse <laughs> people coming together. And I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny. It's, um, in fact, uh, when I'm doing a webinar, you know, people turn on the transcript, which is AI, you know, uh, based, right? Uh, to and then the transcript never gets data diversity, right? It, it always translates to diversity. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> well, you know, progress. <laughs> We're <Exactly>. getting there. <laughs> So, so tell me, Katrina, so now what's your definition of data? Yeah, um, I'm going to answer that question. I'm going to try something here. We're going to do okay. a little experiment if you're up for it, Shannon. Oh, yes, I um, am. Okay, so here's the experiment. So um, everyone uh, listening and those of us here on the podcast, we all have heartbeats. I hope we all have heartbeats because yes. we don't have, a, we have bigger problems here. So <laughs> my question is, is your heartbeat data? Let's just like pause for a second and consider that is your heartbeat data. So if we think about that, we can think about that the idea that a heartbeat has the potential to be data. And I don't know, Shannon, are you wearing a Fitbit at all? I have my Apple Watch. Oh, you have your Apple Watch. Okay, good. Yeah. So you are probably rendering something, your heartbeat oh, yes. perhaps, into data. You're turning it into data. And those of yes. you out there listening who have a Fitbit or an Apple Watch are doing the same thing. So mm -hmm. we think about data as, as this thing that we can capture. So there's lots of different um, 
things that can be represented. So I always think of data as a representation of a phenomenon. It's kind of a snapshot of something. And it's linked to this idea of being able to capture something. And what's happening right now is we have more and more ways of capturing things. So we have more and more ways of turning things into data that we could never really turn into data before. And we have ways to store those things and we have ways to leverage those things into new you know, analytics and so forth. And so that's part of how I think of data. Um, and then the other piece I think of is um, this idea of data as an assemblage. So it's not just the output. It's not just like the heartbeat number for me. It's that whole process of what we've done. So we captured it. We're using it in certain ways. We've made decisions to even collect it as data. And so yeah. as an ethicist, what I do is I look at all that context and I, I look at the ethical questions that might come with that. So that's kind of a way of how I think about data and, um, and kind of what it means to me as a data ethicist. Oh, I love that perspective. And it's so true. And I do, I do love my fitness data. <laughs> <laughs> I do. <laughs> we were, I was at a, um, at a conference recently and there was a yoga class offered and the gal next to me, I'm like, oh, I forgot to start my, my watch. And she's like, oh yeah, me too. She's like, it doesn't count unless we capture the data. <laughs> Well, it's so funny. So I'm like a, a huge orange theory um, enthusiast. Yeah. And so yeah. people are like, well, what do you mean? Like, aren't you the one who's all about privacy and ethics and all of that? And I am, but I'm like, but it's useful to me because I, you know, I can see what I'm doing in terms of my workout and where I'm going. And, yeah. and so it's kind of serving me in that moment. And so, yeah, I'm, right. I'm, I'm big on the, the health data as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I love it. That's the fun thing about data, right? It's in everything and everywhere and, and we get to work with it in so many exciting ways that benefit us. Yeah. Um, so tell me, Katrina, do you see the importance then of data management and the number of jobs working with data increasing or decreasing over the next 10 years and why? Yeah, it's, it's so vital. Um, you know, when we think about data, data is everywhere. And every mm -hmm. company is becoming a technology company. So we used to think of tech companies as like Microsoft or Apple. And yeah, those are tech companies. But increasingly, what we're seeing is your grocery store is becoming a tech company. The car right. company is becoming a tech company. It's all about data. Data is really at the heart of all of that. And so data is everywhere. And data is um, part of everyone's job, whether you recognize yeah. that or not. And so this idea of really understanding, like being... Uh, data literate, understanding data governance, understanding data management, like it's incredibly important, understanding ethics as well, all like yeah. super important to pretty much any um, kind of job that you're going to have now and in the future. Oh, very true. So what advice then would you give to people who are looking to get into a career in data? Yeah, um, there's so much to learn about data. I mean, it's such a fascinating topic. Obviously, there's great podcasts like this and all of the great resources on data diversity. So I highly recommend all of that. You've got some fantastic guests, like some real heavy hitters. Uh, when I looked at who's who's who of data, Laura, Sebastian Coleman, Peter Aiken, they've all been on this podcast. So there's some really yeah. great people to follow. Um, I also love the DEMA community. So um, DEMA yeah. is the, the data management community. Um, they have this mm -hmm. massive book. Um, which is their body of knowledge. And yes. um, I spent some really um, good time with uh, my local DEMA group going through that book. Um, and it was fun yes. because we were doing it as a group project and we were like yeah. helping each other out and, and that, and also building community at the same time. So I, I think get connected to community. That would be mm -hmm. part of my advice. Um, and then I, I think also sometimes it can feel intimidating if you're, especially if you're thinking, oh, this is a career pivot or something different. But there's ways to add data to whatever you're doing right now. So if you're an educator, um, you have an education background like myself, you can help to you know, learn about data and teach data courses. If you're a lawyer, maybe you can pivot into privacy and data. Like there's ways to kind of add data to a career that you already have if that's what you're doing. So there's lots of different opportunities. Oh, such great advice. I love that. So and and Katrina, I, I'm curious, I'm so curious to like, what's the number one like advice as an, uh, uh, just, uh, that you give to your customers about being responsible with AI? You know, what is the, the core of being uh, ethical? Yeah. With, and well, responsible. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, really ethics, a lot of ethics is about being really thoughtful and intentional about your process. So I think, um, number one, if you're wanting to be responsible, that's a fantastic start. You're, you're starting out, you want to do something positive. Um, I think you can look at everything um, holistically. So mm -hmm. sometimes it's really tempting just to look at uh, the solution, but you should look at the problem that you're trying to solve before you kind of jump to the solution and then sort of figure out what's going on here. And from an ethics standpoint, what makes sense as a solution? Who might be impacted? So start really thinking holistically about um, how you're approaching things. Um, and then just try and iterate and do better next time. I think that, you know, sometimes people get intimidated and they think I have to have everything perfect the first time out. Um, I try to encourage people, but that's not necessarily the case. What it's about is trying to build up a capacity for ethical thinking and responsible AI in your company and then just kind of building on that and iterating. So that's really what I encourage people to do. Oh, very nice. And if somebody wanted to reach out to you and solicit your services, how would they find you? Sure. Well, um, there's lots of information on my website, ethicallyalignedai.com. I'm also on LinkedIn a lot, so you can find me there. It's another good place. Um, yeah, those are probably the two main sources. Oh, this has been so great. Uh, Katrina, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, thanks so much for the invite. It's been a lot of fun. It's been a great fun. So I'm, and I'm really excited to watch what you do and because it's, I think this topic is just getting bigger and bigger and better uh, and more important. It's so important right now with all the generative AI and everything else out there. So Absolutely. thank you for taking this on. <laughs> <Thanks so much. laughs> well, and to all of our listeners out there, if you'd like to keep up to date in the latest in podcasts and in the latest in data management education, you may go to dataversity.net forward slash subscribe until next time and stay curious, everyone. Thank you for listening to Dataversity Talks, a podcast brought to you by Dataversity. Subscribe to our newsletter for podcast updates and information about our free educational webinars at dataversity.net forward slash subscribe. Thank you.